body pillows, anime t-shirts, waifu figures. These are all key items to an anime fan starter pack. But today, i like to add one new item to the weebs must have list, 3D printers. 3D printers are amazing. They're used in prototyping from the smallest of startups to large defense companies. They even allow everyday people to create useful items and solutions to improve their daily life from the comfort of their own bedrooms. From a weeb standpoint, 3D printers allow us to easily produce and physically inject the anime world into our own lives. Just look at all of these anime related items that I printed over the course of just two weeks. But before I go into the various anime items that I printed, let me quickly show you the various 3D printers that I've accumulated over the years so you can get an idea for yourself what kind of 3D printer you might want to start with. This is the Cetus Mark III, which at the time it was released was touted as one of the best affordable 3D printers available. This printer was my first foray into the world of 3D printing and worked really well for all my needs as a brand new 3D printing hobbyist. The only issue I had with it was the fact that the build area is very small, so I couldn't print a lot of parts I needed for larger projects. And just like how Krumi quickly surpassed Toka in being best girl, these days the Cetus just sits in storage because it was replaced by the bigger and better printers I have stationed in my closet. In the closet, I have a Prusa Mark III Plus, which is very reliable and used to be my main printer for about two years. And now that the Mark IV has been released, you should be able to get Mark III's at a pretty good price. But for my Mark III, these days, just like ReZero's RAM, the Prusa serves more of a supporting role in my fleet of 3D printers. Also in the closet, I have these two Creality Ender 3 Pros. Most people recommend this printer for anyone who is new to 3D printing. This is because they're easy to assemble, it has a pretty good sized build plate, there's a lot of third party modifications available, and most importantly, they're very cheap. I was able to buy these two at Micro Center for $100 each. However, out of all the printers I've shown you so far, the Enders were the hardest to dial in and are harder to get good prints out of consistently when compared to the Prusa. Because of this fact, they serve a reservist role and I only use them on very simple or mass produced prints. Now all of the printers I've shown you so far are FDM printers, which stands for Fused Deposition Modeling. These 3D printers print by using spools of filament and extrudes the materials layer by layer onto a build surface. On the other hand, the other common form of 3D printing is called SLA. SLA printers use a vat of resin with a UV light at the bottom. The UV light is used to harden the resin onto a moving build plate to create the print layer by layer. For example, sitting right outside my closet of 3D printers is this, the Anycubic Mono X, which I specifically bought for its larger build size compared to the other SLA printers available at the time. When it comes to print quality, SLA printing can achieve a much higher quality print when compared to most FDM printers. In fact, a lot of anime figure manufacturers use SLA printers just like these in their prototyping process. Standing next to the SLA printer is its wash and cure machine, which I like to call the washer and dryer. You'll have to buy one of these in addition to the SLA printer itself. What it does is wash the print in isopropyl after it's done printing, and then cure all the resin on the print using a UV light. However, for someone just getting started in 3D printing, I would recommend FDM printers because SLA printers are a lot messier, there's more protective equipment involved, and the resin and resin fumes are harmful to your health. Now, most importantly, I wanted to show you this, the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon, the current best girl of the 3D printing world and my current favorite 3D printer on earth. Without getting into the technical stuff, this printer is a beast when it comes to print speed and ease of use. It can print in six hours, but the Prusa prints in 14 hours. Also, it is so smart that it does all the dialing in for me automatically. This means that 98% of the time, the prints come out with little to no defects, even after many months of performing zero maintenance. Sitting on top of the printer is a multi-material system. This allows the printer to change materials and in most of my cases, change the color during prints to create 3D objects with multiple colors. Out of all the 3D printers I've ever used, which includes a Stratasys, which is considered an industrial 3D printer, the X1 Carbon is the most reliable, supportive, fastest, and the most enjoyable 3D printing experience by far. And for that reason, I shall christen this printer, Rem. So now that you have an idea of what 3D printer to buy, get the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. 
Now it is the time to see all the anime related things that you can print. To make sure you'll be able to print everything you see in this video, I look for these 3D models on large reputable sites such as Printables and Thingiverse. Only one or two of the things I'm about to show you aren't currently available online because I designed them myself. But I am currently working on a site where you can eventually download all of my project files from all my different videos, so you eventually have access to those as well. So let's start with the category of items for the most closeted of weebs, anime keychains. Anime keychains are great. They're easy to make, don't require a lot of work after printing, and they make great gifts. Also, they're small, so they don't take very long to print, making them perfect for anyone's first prints. Out of all of these keychains, the easiest one would probably be this Pokeball outline because it's only one color allowing it for any 3D printer to print. For the initial D Truno keychain and the Luffy keychain, a printer with multi-material capabilities is required for the print to have multiple colors. But before giving up on printing a specific keychain just because you don't have a multi-material system, make sure you read carefully because some 3D models, such as this Nerve keychain or this Demon Slayer keychain, also have the option for you to print the model as separate parts and then glue it all together, meaning you can use any 3D printer to make them. The next type of anime item is probably the first idea that pops into your head when you think of 3D printing and anime. Anime figures! Now I know you'll all want to start printing anime figures instead of spending hundreds of dollars on them, but it's not really that easy as of yet. This is because 1. There's not that many free figures available online, 2. The quality and details of 3D printed figures don't look that good, and 3. Without a high quality paint job, the figures just look creepy. So instead, I recommend printing chibi or less detailed versions of your favorite characters. For example, I found this blocky version of Hololive's Gargura ah. and this blocky version of Hololive's Hosho Marine. Ah you can print these two with any printer because the model is broken up into multiple small pieces and the model files have the parts separated into different files based on color. These two blocky figures were extremely fun to print and assemble, but you will need to keep track of all the small parts you printed to make sure you have everything needed when it comes time to assemble them. If you're looking to print something easier than these two blocky Hololive characters, then I would recommend cute characters such as this Botan SSRB or this Pom Pom Piran. They each took less than two hours to print on the X1 Carbon and came out looking great with essentially no defects. However, it'll be best to get a multi-material system because a lot of these 3D models of these cute characters, such as the both of these, won't come as multiple parts. The last figure I printed is this gum gum fruit from One Piece in a silk purple PLA, which I have to say came out looking amazing. The dark brown stem and the purple fruit section are two different parts, which means you can print this with any 3D printer. But now that I think about it, is this considered a figure or is it better suited in our next category? Anime Home Decor. The first home decor item I printed is this Tori Gate, which serves as both decoration as well as the perfect chopstick holder that will always have chopsticks at the ready for you to enjoy your meal of champions. Like a lot of other items you'll see in this home decor category, this Tori Gate is made up of multiple parts and is printed separately based on color. Assembly is as easy as gluing the three black pieces to the red piece and waiting for the glue to dry. Out of all the home decor items on this list, this chopstick holder is the easiest to print and assemble. Next up, we have this 86 inspired bookends to help you keep all your cultured manga standing neat and upright. Even though the bookends look pretty big, because they're printed standing up, you can print them even on small print beds. You just need to make sure that the printer is tall enough to print it or else you'd have to print it on its side. Also, since they have large flat but thin surfaces, you want to make sure that your print has proper bed adhesion or else your print may start to lift, resulting in a slightly bent part as seen here. All in all, I'm pretty pleased with these bookends because it adds more of an anime aesthetic to my tiny assortment of manga. The only way I can easily improve on this display is to have the collection of 86 novels instead of Rent-A-Girlfriend manga. Moving on to the most popular anime in the world, this is a Pokeball Planter. Each color is a different printed part and is relatively simple to assemble as long as all your prints come out dimensionally correct. You can use this planter for succulents and other plants, but it also works just as well as a pencil cut. From the same designer of this Pokeball planter is this Pokeball tissue box cover. Just like the planter, it's made of four different parts and since it's larger, assembling and disassembling this to replace the actual tissue box inside is easier than assembling the Pokeball planter. What I really like about this tissue box cover is the size of the overall package. It's large enough to be clearly seen and recognized sitting in a room, 
but not too large to the point where it draws too much attention and stands out too much. Also, compared to the Pokeball Planter, we all know that for us weebs, the tissue box cover will see much more nightly use. Speaking of empty balls, I printed these two Pokeball coin banks that turned out much better than I expected. These coin banks are very easy to print and compared to the tissue holder and the planter are much easier to assemble. More importantly, they look insanely good on your shelf or table and the designer has made many different Pokeball versions which allows you to create a nice display of all the available Pokeballs. Also, these coin banks serve very well as presents for friends and family since almost everyone likes Pokemon and it's a suitable gift for almost all ages. In fact, they're such good gifts that two of my friends have already called dibs on these Pokeballs to take them home after I'm done with the video. And the last, but probably the coolest of the home decor category, these two lanterns from Genshin Impact's Inazuma. Now, a quick warning. Out of all the items I printed for this video, these two are by far the hardest and most finicky things to print out and assemble, especially the smaller one. This is because all the parts need to fit together nicely with no gaps, so you'll have to keep defects such as print lifting to a minimum. Also, I had to design my own version of this bottom piece so that I could fit these light sockets I got off Amazon. But just like the Yoru Cat movie, the pain and struggle to successfully print and assemble these is completely worth it. Look how good they look just sitting on the table. And after I installed these RGB smart bulbs I bought from Home Depot, I can now adjust the lamp to literally any color I want. We can go with warm white for a traditional look or electric purple for a cyberpunk look. These are perfect for placing any boring old lamps you may have around the house, serving as a nightlight, or in my case, I now have anime themed practical lights for the background of my studio. And now for my favorite category, cosplay props. I tried to look for cosplay props that were super easy to print and are suitable for beginners, so most of these props will be relatively small. We'll start off with cosplay accessories, such as this basement key as seen around Eren's neck from Attack on Titan. It's an insanely simple print, prints out as a single part, and the only work you really have to do is remove a tiny amount of support material. Hit it with some spray paint and thread a cheap necklace through the large hole on top, and it's ready to be integrated into any Aaron Yeager cosplay. Another insanely simple cosplay print is this two-part ring from My Hero Academia. Together, both parts take less than an hour to print, and all you have to do to assemble the ring is slide the red part into the gray part. What surprised me is I thought the edges of the rings would be sharp and annoyingly scratch your skin while you're wearing it, but it's actually really smooth and very comfortable to wear. Similarly, this 8-bit moon hair clip is another very simple two-part print. I designed this hair clip myself, and it's based off this version of Hololive Indonesia's Hoshinova Muna. To assemble, all you have to do is glue the yellow part inside the black part, and then choose whether you want to glue a hair clip on the back or a safety pin to turn it into a button for your backpack. Another hair clip slash button pin I designed is this one based off Shirley or Nemesis from the anime game Tower of Fantasy. Unlike the 8-bit moon, however, this hair clip is designed as one single part, so a printer with a multi-material system is required to print it. The same goes for these Anya hair... uh... cones? I tried looking for a 3D model where the yellow part was separate from the black part, but unfortunately, all the designers model this cone thing as one singular part. And the last item in cosplay accessories is this collapsible comb from Genshin Impact's Arutaki Ido. The comb prints in multiple parts and may require some sanding to get the two large parts to fit and rotate smoothly. Also, due to the shape of the handle and the various colors presented in Ido's actual comb, I wouldn't recommend printing this with a multi-material system since you'll end up wasting a lot of filaments during each color switch. This is one of those prints that does require some painting to look accurate, but hey, the opening and closing action works great. It probably also does work as a comb, and once you get some color on there, I'm sure it will be perfect for you to cosplay as Arataki Ito at the next anime convention. And last, but definitely not least, we have cosplay weapons. Prop weapons are usually very large, multi-part prints that require dimensional accuracy to fit together correctly, so there isn't a lot that make for good beginner prints. To start, here is a kunai from Naruto. It prints as three different parts, the blade, the handle, and this connecting rod that goes inside the other parts. The grip part of the kunai is smooth, and the designer intended for you to wrap string around it to match the kunais you see in the anime. On the other hand, here we have a compensator for an Airsoft 1911 to make it look like Chisato's 1911 from Licorice Recoil. It prints out as one piece and you'll have a great time removing all the supports while trying not to break little bits of the compensator itself. But at the end of the day, it looks pretty good and you can use it for both cosplaying or for adding a bit of anime to your airsoft collection. 
However, keep in mind that you'll need to get a 1911 with a lower rail like this. You won't be able to install onto one of those traditional, but arguably prettier 1911s. Now I know you're probably underwhelmed by these two so-called cosplay prop weapons, but remember, I'm trying to show you prints that I feel are more suitable for beginners to try and get more anime fans into 3D printing. Once you dial in your printer, print a couple keychains, pokeballs, and are more comfortable with 3D printing, then you can start exploring some more complicated prints, such as this unpainted mist splitter from Genshin Impact, or this Master Sword from Breath of the Wild. Both of these swords have more than 10 parts each, and the mist splitter actually requires two 3mm dowels inside to keep all the parts correctly aligned. Of the two swords, I would say the mist splitter was the harder of the two swords to print and assemble. Some of the parts of the mist splitter are so big that it may not fit on many build plates, and you still have to glue all the parts together and make sure they're aligned correctly. Even though the Master Sword does have a lot more parts and took about twice the amount of time as the mist splitter to print, it's still the easier of the two since everything is friction fit so you don't need to glue the parts together and as long as the parts are printed well, you don't have to worry about the parts being misaligned. Also, if you don't want to deal with any painting, the Master Sword is the way to go since each part of the sword is only one color. The possibilities of 3D printing cosplay are endless and in my opinion, the most rewarding. These were the first cosplay props I've ever made and I had a lot more fun than I thought I would printing and assembling them. When you finish a print and assembly and hold in your hands a full-size item that only exists in the anime world, it feels very uplifting and sort of feels like you've merged the two worlds together. And hey, five-headed move for everyone watching. We all watch My Dress Up Darling. 3D printing is probably the fastest and easiest way for you to get into making cosplays and props. And you all saw what making cosplays equals. So now you have an idea of a couple good candidates for your first 3D printer, and you've seen some simple but amazing anime items you can start off printing, get out there and explore the amazing world of 3D printing. Eventually, you may even learn how to 3D model and can start printing your own inventions, just like how I 3D model and print a lot of the parts for my various inventions of builds you see on my channel. If you want to print any of the items you've seen in this video, I will leave links to all the 3D models in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe since it would really help in boosting the channel within the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see some of the crazy inventions I created using 3D printing, check out this video where I made the jet power tennis racket from Spy Family, or check out this video where I made the most inappropriate anime gift box based off combatants will be dispatched. I've been Obaka, and I will see you next time.